Welcome to the Ultimate Draft Tips show. We are breaking down things inside of the Ultimate Draft Kit, showing you how we use it, how we believe that you can use it to be a better fantasy football player. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. It's almost that time of year. The time when I set the foundation for supreme and total dominance at my fantasy football draft. How can I be so confident? Because I used the ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers. Man, it updates all off season, so I never worry about using old busted information. Consistency charts, auction values, full projections. Oh baby, this thing's got it all. If you want to keep it 100 for your draft, head to ultimatedraftkit.com and get your copy today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> it's never coming back, is it? But I liked how it turned into a growly monster. I didn't want it to be. I I, I really did. appreciated that, though. I really did appreciate that when you were losing it, you pushed through and got to the growl. I feel like he. Yeah, it was like a, a leap off a cliff, and then it like lands in a safety roll, like over the shoulder. <laughs> when you walked in this morning, you said, hey, how's the voice? I did. I said, I have no idea. Well, now because, we know. Because <laughs> I'm not going to test it early. I don't want to burn it out. But uh, apparently it's never coming back. Not fully. Well, we, sh- we should have a Viking funeral for it. My goodness. That NFT value is going down it, by the or day. Or up. Or up. I mean, if somebody has it. Oh, it's more rare now? Yeah. That's okay. People don't understand, though. Like, when we record the podcast, like, people come in sometimes, they watch it live, or they see us do the show, and... They're amazed. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, we pre-fill out autographs because they need them mid-show. That's how amazed they are. Um, But they don't understand how loud we are. Yes. Or they don't comprehend how loud the recording is. I mean, Brooks is nodding his head, right? It's a totally different level of energy that we are bringing to the fantasy I, football world. I'm screaming right now. You have no idea, but I am literally screaming right these words that you're listening to. So, uh, yeah, you don't know until you know, until you go, and the show gets started. So Thursday, May 27th, welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Jason Moore, Andy Holloway with you. One of my favorite shows. Uh, we're doing our ultimate draft tips on the show today. Oh, baby. And uh, I went back to last year's show, and these were very valuable. Uh, in in hindsight, some of the things brought up on this episode were actual advantages for your team during draft day. And we are looking. I mean, when you are playing fantasy football, and this show exists to do uh, to help you with this, you are looking for every possible minute advantage over your league mates. We are by nature in a uh, a sport here, a fantasy football, where predictability is hard. It's hard to know what's going to happen. It's hard to know how a coaching staff or an injury or any of those things affects your team. And nobody gets it all right. But we're going to try to give you a handful of advantages today, specifically for your draft, that will pay dividends throughout the fantasy football season, which is now 17 weeks long. So I know that we're all very excited to share some of the insights, um, some of the draft tips with you, and get you ready for your draft. A reminder, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, there have been some changes. Now it's a follow button. It's not a subscribe button, Mike. Right. Fun- Do not subscribe. I don't think follow. They- yeah, they follow. Yeah. But if you previously subscribed. I think you're good. I think you are now following. Yeah, you're fine. But if you are like brand new, yeah. you need to click the plus. You yeah, need get, to follow. Yeah, get in line. Right. <laughs> follow us. 
Don't subscribe. Follow. And uh, unless we, you're on YouTube, in which case in, you subscribe. So we, we would definitely want you to subscribe there. Right. You don't follow on YouTube? No, I don't. That's not no, yet. That's, that's coming soon. <laughs> that's subscribing. <laughs> they're very different, Mike. The episodes show up in your pocket either way, but they're very different concepts. Uh, we appreciate it if you uh, if you're new to the show, if you've never left left us a review on Apple Podcasts. If you want to take a couple seconds and do that, it helps the podcast out. And uh, you heard Matthew McConaughey at the top of the show. Uh, Michael. Uh, Michael McConaughey. Yeah, my Michael. Michael. Good friend. Um, Michael McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be confused with Michael McDonald, voice of an angel. Right. Thank you, Mike. Uh, <laughs> UltimateDraftKit.com. There are five days left to get the pre-order pricing. UltimateDraftKit.com. Let's do some buy-sell. Buy or sell. Presented by Pristine Auction. Not to be confused with Ronald McDonald, great friend of the show. Oh, you could confuse that one because uh, the pur- dude's awesome. Purveyor of cheeseburgers. <laughs> I love his work. <laughs> purveyor. <laughs> you think he's ever called himself a purveyor? <laughs> well, look, when you look I don't in think the, he speaks. When you look in the mirror, and all, yeah, he does. He for sure does. For but, real? Yeah, but if you look in the mirror and you're always a clown, you have to find ways to you know, get, get that self-esteem Get rally. sophisticated? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Little known fact, I've lived... <laughs> Mayor McCheese. I have lived in the same house for the past three and a half years. We live directly next door to Ronald McDonald's uh, residence. Sure. One and of his One, one of, of his many estates. And um, <laughs> and I did it. I did I did it for the first time. You, vi- you I visited... visited. I, I, made, I paid a visit. I know Jason's been there many times before. You went down to Mactown. I went down to Mactown. Okay. It's, it's uh, you know... It's pretty good. Oh, you, you you think they've got something going there? I think they got. <laughs> you think they're gonna? I think that's McDonald's thing's gonna take off. I think it's possible. All, All right. right, buy or sell Miles Gaskin edition. Will or I guess Gas Man edition. Oh, the Gas Man. Will he finish higher than his current ADP, which is average draft position? His current ADP. Is running back twenty four. Man, he was the RB twenty seven last year in ten games. As a reminder, no running back plays sixteen. So uh, you know, in a in you know, let's say four fewer games than most running backs, he was the running back twenty seven. Never busted. Top thirty six or better in every game. Eighteen touches a game. That was it, man. Eighteen point three touches a game. Is you got to fill him up. If you if you touch the ball that much, you are great for fantasy. Period. You can suck, and you're great for fantasy. And for the record, he did not suck. No, no, he did not. Excellent receiving back. Four receptions a game, nine point five per reception, which was numero uno among all running backs. So he he See, delivered. I told you big plays <laughs> in the passing game. Oh man, he is he. So the the big winners, the big veteran winners of the NFL draft were Mike Davis and the gas man, Miles Gaskin, for incumbents. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, that's what I mean. Veteran winners uh, at the running back position because it felt like neither of those guys would end up locked and loaded as the starter on their team. Right now, Mike Davis certainly looks like that, and so does Miles Gaskin. Now there's there is competition with bringing in Malcolm Brown. Uh, Ahmed was excellent in replacement of Gaskin last year. And the, it's the risk, though, the risk of Miles Gaskin is it's already there. It's baked into its the, the, the draft price. It's accounted for because he's the running back 24, where the, the, the actual finish of Miles Gaskin at running back 27 doesn't properly tell the tale of when you started Miles Gaskin – you're pretty happy about it, and there's a lot of running backs that finish high in the rankings, and you can't say that. And I'm I'm skeptical that Miles Gaskin will be the guy. We you you spent most of last year being skeptical that Miles Gaskin would continue to be the guy. However, he did when he came back from injury, right back to being the starter and getting all the snaps and all the touches. I have him ranked slightly above that ADP, so I think at worst. He does return the value, and there is a lot of upside for Miles Gaskin. This Dolphins team has really turned things around. A lot of uh, highly skilled offensive players on this team. If Tua can get it together, 
Miles Gaskin could turn into an, an incredible value. You have him as RB23, so you're buying. I am buying as well. We actually have him statted very similarly in terms of total volume. Jason, are you selling? I am selling. Um, I am selling. I have him as the RB27 You sold right him now. all last I year. I did. I did, absolutely. We couldn't I, get I you was, on board. I was surprised, as you said. Like, you know, we, everyone was surprised that it just kept happening. Um, hey, you called him the trash man, if I recall. I don't believe I did, but <laughs> that would have been that would have been a great, great name. I'm glad I didn't because he wasn't trash. Um, but the the reality is this: they when when we were going into the NFL draft, it was like, oh, what are the great landing spots for running backs? And one of them was here because Miles Gaskin is not this um, otherworldly talent that can't be supplanted by a rookie but the other reason was because of how they utilized a running back in 2020 it was a one-man show whoever it was when it was Ahmed when it was Miles Gaskin they wanted that three down back this is a defensive head coach and there is a completely new offensive coordinator now in town uh, the offensive coordinator Chan Gailey is gone and I don't believe that they will run a single back out there. I think they brought in Malcolm Brown. They've talked him up. If you if you watch the press conferences after the NFL draft, both both days, Malcolm Brown was one of the most common names brought up. And so the way that I've projected the stats is kind of more of a committee between Miles Gaskin and Malcolm Brown. If Malcolm Brown becomes the goal line guy, um, that that takes some of the the upside away. I mean, obviously, I do believe if Gaskin is utilized in the same way, he'll smash that. I don't believe that's the case. I don't think he's going to be utilized like that. Um, so I, I have him as the RB27. David Johnson, Mike Davis, Miles Sanders, Raheem Moster, Travis Etienne, those are players going in the same range right now, mm -hmm. ADP-wise. Most of those sound better to me, but uh, to each their own. All right, that was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. Mike and I were buying. Jason was selling. PristineAuction.com. Use our code BALLERS, Ballers to get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right. The 49ers running back, Jeff Wilson Jr. My name is Jeff. <laughs> likely out four to six months after this, recently undergoing surgery for this a guy, man. torn meniscus. Not this guy, this team. Like it, it's already starting Fair. again. The 49ers just can't I feel bad for him. I do too. I mean, it's obviously uh horrible. He was great last year uh when he got his opportunity and he I think it was expected that he was the two of the one two punch with sure. Raheem Mostert. And um so this is you know, someone else has to step up at least in training camp. Uh, at least in preseason and and will get an opportunity to shine in front of Kyle Shanahan. Mostert will probably get an extra carry or two, but it's going to be who becomes the number two, and why is that Trey Sermon? <laughs> it it could be Trey Sermon. They did trade up for him in the third round, which we history history says when they trade up for a running back in that range, that person gets work. Uh, the the name I'm going to throw out though, just to check, this guy literally might be on your dynasty waiver wire. And it's it's Wayne Gallman. Like he's on the team. He felt like the odd man out completely. But now with Jeff Wilson missing so much time, missing the entire offseason, you you might have a player there. This is a training camp. Does Trey Sermon make the kind of mistakes that make Kyle Shanahan afraid? That's what it is to me. I think sure. Trey Sermon has every opportunity. But if he can't pass block, if he can't execute the offense if he's making dumb mistakes the veteran will get the opportunity Jeff Wilson last year in just 11 games had 126 carries in this offense you know Raheem Mostert for all of his great speed only had 104 due to injuries last year the running back position something about the ground in San Francisco it is disrupting the knees they're all just stay so safe fit. out there Kyle Juszczyk stay safe yeah so um Sermon is interesting Yes. Because he has the – I think he has the physical traits and abilities to really have a role in this offense. And, you know, God forbid Raheem Moster goes down again. Trey Sermon could be that, you know, he could actually emerge as a huge fantasy contributor over the back half of the year. Totally agree.
Yeah, I mean, if you think about how valuable that team running game is, and then you think, well, Jarek McKinnon is gone, Tevin Coleman is gone, and now, at least for the beginning, Jeff Wilson is gone, and you trade up in the third round, yeah, the, the Trey Sermon could, I think, earlier than the second half of the year, make an impact. Antonio Brown is officially a buck again. One-year physical. contract, yeah. So we, we expected that. Uh, Ricky Seals-Jones signed with the well, – well, the only reason this news is in there is because Brooks wanted to hear that sound. <laughs> yeah, I did it, but I didn't do it with a lot of enthusiasm. I didn't feel it in your heart. Well, it's not there because it's irrelevant. Ricky Seals-Jones. The Orca got him. Yeah, he was. That was that was the dying sound of oh. of the seals, Jones. Uh, what could have been for Ricky Seals Jones? What could have been? What could have been? That was today's news and notes presented as always by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today, tomorrow. Do it whenever. I mean, as soon or the better. The season for sure. Um, I I I think if you wait too long, that's going to be an issue. But what yes. we would like to do is we'd like to get to some ultimate draft tips, things that are going to help you win your league this year. And before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Vincero. They're back. It's always exciting to have them help sponsor this show. They know how important it is to look and feel your best, and they make some fine watches. You could check Very me out on the YouTube fine. right now with my Vincero watch. They're the perfect solution to your everyday style needs because – you don't have to compromise having a really nice looking watch with, uh, you know, having a crazy expensive experience. Venturo is fantastic for whether you're in the office or on a date or anywhere in between, uh, you, whether you're an entrepreneur, an athlete, podcast host like us, like they've got a style for you. And, you know, look, with the new year, they're offering a five year warranty, a 365 day return policy stress-free shopping with fair and honest prices. That's how we do. And we are Vincero watches. So, uh, look, don't overpay for a watch, a watch that looks cheap and is going to disappoint you. Go to VinceroCollective.com forward slash fantasy. Support our show. Head over to their website right now and get yourself a timepiece or even better with Father's Day right around the corner. It's perfect time to pick up that perfect gift. Go to VinceroCollective.com forward slash fantasy this is a buy you will not regret and we'd like to thank better help for sponsoring today's show is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals uh if we can find any silver lining from this last year and all the craziness mental health really has come to the forefront and i uh, i'm here for it as a mental health advocate and better help is a way that you can help Take care of that. Look, you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. You can log into your account anytime. Send a message to your counselor. You'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone session sessions so you won't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room with traditional therapy. BetterHelp wants to, uh, wants to help you start living a happier life today. And right now, you can visit betterhelp.com slash footballers. That's better H E L P and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of experienced professionals. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp. They are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and fantasy footballers listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash footballers. Tips and tricks. All right, so I gave you the overview at the top of the show of what we're doing today. We really want to uh, bring forth some of the insights from the Ultimate Draft Kit and from our uh, experience dealing with these drafts each and every year, the things that we've seen in our own, uh, you know, in our own leagues that have benefited uh, fantasy players, things that have hurt fantasy players, some of the things you overlook. Uh, I love these tip shows because I, I feel like you know, we hear from the listeners that uh, one or two of the things that are brought up really benefit their team year over year, and hopefully you can just add it to the, you know, to the vault of knowledge that you have each and every year trying to take advantage of your league mates. Absolutely, and I'm going to jump in here first because my first Ultimate Draft tip, uh, things that are available in the Ultimate Draft Kit, I'm piggybacking off of today's news, and I want to talk about injury reports. 
for as, look, as incredibly smart and devastatingly handsome as the three of us are. Yes. Look, injury. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty as charged, yeah. yes. Look, injuries, I'm not, I, I'm not out in the field. I'm not, I'm not doing doctory stuff. I'm not doing physical therapy stuff. Breaking down injuries, I'm doing my best over here, but not a doctor. We do have an injury report inside the Ultimate Draft Kit that is filled out by our fantasy PT, licensed and practicing physical therapist, Matthew Betts. He's been doing this for the past couple of years, and these are sensational. And just like our rankings, these things are updated all offseason because you know who's already in this? Jeff Wilson. Like As soon as that injury broke, Betts jumped on. It's like, well, into the blurbs I go, and he was talking about the torn meniscus, saying you know how the timeline is four to six months, and highlighting these injuries are usually the six months. So while they're giving you the four to six, Betts is saying – Pump the brakes. Plan on six. Plan on the six, and, and like also Would all that be players, like November. Uh, look, I can't do math. Okay, that's way too far. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> I can tell you six weeks from now. I can't tell you six. Gotcha. Uh, but I guess op updated all off season. And any player who had an injury last year, and you're wondering about it, this you need to be informed about injuries. Like Dak Prescott, right? It was a broken uh, a broken ankle. A, or a, a fracture with a dislocation to his right ankle, Betts gives his professional opinion on will that limit Dak Prescott? Will he be ready week one? Like, what's the outlook for these players? So I am extremely proud of uh, of what we are offering here in the Ultimate Draft Kit for just a real in-depth look at injuries, which are a huge, huge part, unfortunately, a huge part of, of football and fantasy football. I, I rely on bets personally for my fantasy football. Like, I, I hit him up whenever a, a, an injury has happened fresh or as I'm going through and statting these players out and then I remember, oh, yeah, this pl this player was injured at the end of last season. I go and I seek him out and I say, hey. Yeah, he let's actually wanted me to talk to you about that. Stop with it. <laughs> 2, 2 a.m. is not the like, right time to text. Fantasy is always the right time. Not only do we hit him up for fantasy football injury advice, we hit him up for personal injury advice. Uh, we were on the on the pickleball court. That's true. And Al Borland went down like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. Oh, what I was remember. Just, ow, 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 just ow, ow, shrieking, ow, 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 shrieking about his leg. His, it, he had a lower leg injury. Right. And look, the three of us, we got our doctor minds together, and we fully assessed that he had torn his Achilles. We knew right. it for sure. We yeah, uh, we, we did we did some tests. Well, I mean, mostly because of how loud he was shrieking. <laughs> It couldn't, he couldn't finish the game. I mean, we were up, Owl. It, it was really selfish of you. But so the three of us were like, Dude. Yeah, you guys had to forfeit. We're like, you That's totally right. you totally torn your Achilles. I've torn it. We're so sorry, man. And then he, we were, I'm like, oh, call Betts. And Betts is, says, we'll do this test. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're fine. Yeah, yeah and, he, and he, he was ended fine. Up, yeah, he ended up fine. Um, but Probably the, should have finished the game. The, the point here, thank you for sharing that story. It's very, very valuable, um, and, I, and I love it. Real life experience, man, in uh, the field. But but I do think um, you know it's it it's really really cool that the same exact expertise that when I want to know okay Saquon's injuries should we be concerned about this I was shocked you know it was like oh it was so early but then he's like well the surgery didn't happen until months later so you got to go off that day. that type of information you guys have the same information I have um, and you, we're gonna we're gonna associate the players with their injuries so you, it'll pop up whoever's got one of those blurbs written about them. And you can go and see because sometimes it's the exact opposite. Sometimes you'll go and say, look, this injury is not a problem. Draft with full right. confidence. Yep. All right. The, the tip that I want to bring up is basically how to make use of our snapshot tool inside of the ultimate draft kit. <laughs> that thing is powerful. We have spent, um, you know, we've had consistency charts inside the UDK for a few years now. Consistency charts being, you know, you can look at a career snapshot and see the fantasy finish of players over the last 10 years. And this gives you some context to maybe career consistency. But we have a weekly snapshot tool that lets you see how the season transpired. How did the beginning, middle, end of a season uh, take place? And, and we are biased as fantasy players. We are so excited about the season starting that sometimes the imprint of the first four or five games it's more of an emotional mark on our, our our psyche than the end of the year can be. And one of the things that we've done in there that I encourage everybody to use 
is the ability to sort these consistency charts by parts of the season. So you can you can go and filter from week uh, eight on, for example, and you can see what players ended the season on absolute fire or which players had made that mark of, of being a great player in the beginning of a fantasy season and then they declined. And the truth is, is when we're going through and putting in our projections and are and statting out each and every player in the NFL, what makes a big mark on me and what I look at a lot is how these players played over the back half of the year, especially on teams that were introducing new offensive coordinators, new head coaches, offensive systems. I want to know what is the kind of blueprint for these teams when they're playing at their best and, and what lessons can I learn from that? And I, want, I pulled out some that I want to share just to give you an example of how valuable this tool is. And these will be interesting insights into each of these players as well. Uh, some good, these are some of the good insights that I pulled out of there. Lamar Jackson, you know, this is from week 10 on, he returned to fantasy form. That is the truth. He was the quarterback two in points per game. Oh yeah, he was. A, a, in I know per, all about it. Points per game from week 10 on. That is an insight that maybe look, the beginning half of the year was not good. Who was three and four in points per game? Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady from week 10 on. If you want to know why I'm bullish on Tom Brady in my rankings, his end of season trend, learning the system, what numbers he was already putting up. is not projecting. He did it over the back half of the year. Justin Jefferson from week 10 on was the wide receiver four in that stretch. If you want to know what the ceiling really is for Justin Jefferson, you saw it for a long period of time. And then one more that's kind of tied into Lamar. People feel a bit weary about Mark Andrews. I can feel the sentiment. People are moving. Uh, I think Jason has TJ Hawkinson ahead of him. Darn right I do. Um, Ooh. Mark Andrews was the tight end three. From week ten on last year, if you believe in Mark in Lamar Jackson and him, you know the second half of the year or the MVP year, Mark Andrews will be a prolific scorer in fantasy. That is what he's done when Lamar is good. So, those are some of the good insights. I do have some bad ones I want to share. Oh no, I'm sorry, but like these, bad for the player or bad? It's just bad analysis. Just bad analysis uh, just. for the player. We'll, oh, go, we'll go that direction. Okay, yeah. okay. This is a change well, up. You can decide if it's bad analysis. <laughs> Leonard Fournette. Had a nice playoff run. Maybe that's imprinted in your brain, how good the Buccaneers were and how they leaned on him. When you look at him for fantasy, down the stretch, during that window where the Buccaneers were doing everything they were hoping to do, completely unusable. Two usable games all season long. Nothing inside the top 10. So keep that in mind, what they did with Ronald Jones, what they did with Leonard Fournette. Chase Claypool, huge mental mark on all the fantasy players out there. Awful, yeah, awful he, down the stretch. He started hot. Five consecutive games as a wide receiver, four or worse, in that offense. And so if they don't pass as much, are you marginalizing Claypool to only a big play type of guy? And then, Mike, I hate to do this to you, but I was shocked looking at the consistency snapshot tool. On mine? Michael Pittman Jr. Oh, yes. Lots of hope for him this year. Lots of hype. Really nothing that should be based on last year's fantasy finishes. Two games the entire season inside the top can you believe that? I mean, that is oh a, yeah, I do. I that do. is a shocking lack of production. Uh, you have Hilton healthy. You have Paris Campbell coming back. So keep those things in mind. And there are a lot of things that you really can bad quarterback, huge play upgraded coming up. quarterback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with both of those statements. What? Yeah, you like Pittman? Really bad quarterback coming in. Huge upgraded quarterback. No, I said upcoming. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. There's a really bad quarterback coming in. It's a huge upgraded quarterback. Oh, uh, take that, P oh, River. Wow. Yeah, I'll so, get so shots you, in even when you're retired. You, you judo th threw my Carson Wentz insult into a, a Philip Rivers. That's insult. right. Use the momentum against it. <laughs> Impressive. So, <laughs> I have a feeling Carson Wentz is going to dominate some conversation this offseason. Uh, so look at the snapshot tool. Take advantage of the insights that you can pull out of there. Those were some examples. Yeah, I, I absolutely love That's been for about three or four years my most used tool for personal fantasy. So definitely take a look at the snapshot tool. I'm going to talk about something that everybody wants to have. Uh, they, they make their lists. They like our lists and it makes a huge difference when you're in your draft. That's sleepers, breakouts, values, busts, those outliers 
and what and the importance of hitting on a couple of those. Nobody's going to get a hundred percent of those right, and every prediction is going to be accurate. But when you hit on a sleeper or a breakout, or you avoid a bust, it changes the entirety of your roster, and all of a sudden the flexibility and what you could do going forward. It's not enough to just take your list of rankings and go into a draft and just take the next highest player at all times, especially as you get past those first few easy-to-decide rounds. You need to really consider the the swing-for-the-fence mentality, who's going to be a good value, who's going to be a breakout. Uh, I'll bring up some names. These were in our uh, consensus list last year, and that's for the most part what when you're in the ultimate draft kit and you're looking at sleepers, breakouts, bus values, because we don't always agree on everything here, these are the ones we agree on, or at least at least two thirds of us has have fought to get it in the yeah, UDK. Yeah, two thirds, and then we've had to wrestle someone to the ground. That's right. We only do leg wrestling though. Yeah, uh, and it's it's a lot of fun. Um, so last year we had a, a 2020 value of David Montgomery. He was one of our big hits. He, running back 29 finished as running back four. Marvin Jones had that wide receiver 17 finish when he was drafted as the 37th wide receiver. Uh, you're welcome. I, I, I got it in. I fought and got AJ green in as a bus last year. You did <laughs> take that AJ green. Now he's, now he's on my Cardinals. <laughs> um, How does that feel? It feels like I would have him in the bus list again this year if, um, he was drafted at all, but he's not, people are smarter, uh, breakouts, right? This is the real important one. Calvin Ridley last year was in the breakouts. Josh Allen and Kyler were our two quarterbacks. They finished as quarterback one and two. So these lists are things you need to pay attention to. We mark the players for you with these icons in there. And I wanted to give, because this is a tip for 2021, I wanted to give you my two personal favorites from our consistent our, our uh, consensus our list. lists for and, this year. Uh, and going to let you finish, but we'll throw out. These lists, just like everything else, are updated. Throughout the season, we don't call the shots in, off season. We, we don't. We don't update them during the regular season when they're actually breaking out. Yeah, we. we uh, well, I'm saying we don't make a list in May and then say that that's it. We're right. done. No, we we will certainly, especially when it comes to values and you know people that might be a value uh, now won't won't be later. Here are my favorite. So my two favorite sleepers from markets as this list right now. I feel now. like these are just yours though. Well, yeah, I'm the one giving the tip, so they're, they're in there. Okay. But Damian Harris, running back for the New England Patriots, I think has a great opportunity. And Henry Ruggs, I don't project him to be awesome, but I think that the sleeper potential for him to really be the number one is there. So he's in there. That's a, a late-round target that I would highlight. Breakouts, you got the aforementioned TJ Hawkinson, which I am You will all not about. stop talking about TJ Hawkinson. I w in when he can depend on Jared Goff, he will. I, look, when you are the best pass catcher on your team and you're a tight end, that's he's great also, for fantasy. Uh, you know, in my defense, he's the best pass dropper on his team, too. Yeah. Yeah, those are oh, both true. Um, uh, and I and I love Terry McLaurin as a breakout option this year. This year's Calvin Ridley. Um, values, I know we're all very high on just the value of Tom Brady this year. And Amari Cooper, he is being left to be the wide receiver, too, for his team, except... He's not. I'm going to talk about him in a little bit, too. Oh, I hope it agrees with what I'm saying. <laughs> um, and then busts. We got Hunter Henry um, and Melvin Gordon as my two favorite busts to avoid uh, players to avoid this this season. And then we've got a, a lot more. Every single position, every single category, uh, you can peruse those lists in a couple of days. Mike, you got another tip for us? I do. <clears throat> so part of the, the That's ultimate. That's good. Part of the ultimate. <laughs> Nope, I'm all out. <laughs> End of the show. Uh, part of uh, the Ultimate Draft Kit is you get the companion app. Uh, it's it's just part of the package. And uh, I just wanted to highlight how I use the app for drafting. So I inside of our rankings, we give you, uh, which the app is getting a complete facelift. The app is looking. It's outstanding. Did you say app standing? Yeah, I did, and I loved it. But how's the. Well, that was. That was brutal, man. Oh, that was app standing? App standing. <laughs> oh, man. It was app standing joke. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so, so I'll take my lumps. Inside the rankings, uh, we give you the ability to, uh, it, one, you can draft a player and it takes them off the list. So this is like a, 
it's uh it helps you while you're in the middle of your draft uh but it also lets you mark people with uh three different symbols three different colors and i mean you could choose how you use it but i use red for avoid yellow is like uh focus on fo- focus on them and then blue is like Okay, these are my later round guys that I got to make sure I grab because we've all been in the draft where you're getting towards the end and you go, oh, crap. I forgot he was there. I was going to like I needed to remember to draft this guy. It happens all the time. And if you just give him a little highlight and you can scroll through the rankings because look, Jason is right of of these guys that are drafted later and we're giving you a you know, range of, a range of uh, outcomes. That's what the, the rankings are. And, and we have the risk ratings in there because of like the probability of this hitting. And you just, you forget, you forget the guys who are at the bottom of the ADP that you really like. Look, performance anxiety is a real thing, guys. It, dude, tilting in, in the you draft. You need some help. Tilting in a fantasy football draft is a, is now a national pastime yeah. that everyone experiences every single year. And we're, I can't go to better help for that though. Can <laughs> I? Uh, I probably, <laughs> Probably they can work you through that. That, uh, but the ultimate draft kit we're trying to make you as prepared as possible, and using the app in the in the rankings, drafting players, keeping track of everything, it really does help. This is I promise you. This I was is gonna, how I was going to give I this tip. every draft. I was going to give this tip. Uh, you you had it in before I did, but it, because it's super important, every single draft that I have ever been a part of, I have either highlighted players and i'm speaking specifically of those who are later those like outside of the top 100 players those later round guys highlighting i've either highlighted the ones that i really want to target and i leave that draft super stoked with a couple of those pieces of ammunition or i've forgotten to highlight and i go oh dang it every time those players are drafted because i i missed them on my list so yes using that tool is exceptionally valuable All right, I want to bring up another tip from one of the reports you'll find in the Ultimate Draft Kit. And uh, this is an echo of last year because it was very, very helpful. And when I looked at it, this is the Red Zone Report. You can find it inside of the Ultimate Draft Kit. And it highlights opportunities that players had inside the Red Zone, inside the Tin Zone. And last year on this show, the two players that I brought up were Devontae Adams and Nick Chubb. Because there was a, a, a very obvious opportunity for them to kind of positively regress based on their opportunities inside of the red zone. And both smashed last year because it was just clear. They had so many opportunities. And they just weren't hitting. They weren't hitting. The ago. offensive line in Cleveland, we brought it up. You know, it, it struggled last year. This year they fixed it. And, and Nick Chubb was otherworldly. And then Devontae Adams just has so many opportunities. It was like, don't think that this is – going to be the norm for him to have a a handful of touchdowns uh so i i wanted to look at that report this year bring out a couple of of things that stood out and and truthfully they informed and modified my rankings a little bit just from this analysis for this show a few players leapt off the page to me zeke yeah 32 rushing attempts inside the 10 yard line do you know how many touchdowns he had last year inside the 10 five he had five that doesn't seem like it's going to hold that made no sense. In fact, anybody even close to him in that attempt total had at least nine touchdowns last year. So Zeke's five was a complete outlier. It makes me rethink the bounce back opportunity for Zeke a little bit more, making it more probable. You know, his career it was a career low in touchdowns last year for Zeke. He had six total, five inside the ten, and he had thirty two attempts. So that one was just jumped off the page. At the wide receiver position, two players stood out in the way that Devontae Adams did last year. DeAndre Hopkins and Amari Cooper. Both of them ended up with only two touchdowns on targets inside the 10-yard line. Complete outliers based on their involvement in the red zone offense. Both should see tremendous touchdown increases this year if that those opportunities persist, which Jason just talked about Amari Cooper. They should. They were just tough luck guys. On the inverse... Oh, no. We got bad news again. Adam Thielen... Yeah. He had 13 10 zone targets. 13 10 zone targets that turned into 10 touchdowns. That is not likely to stay that high. He is very good. Cousins, very accurate. But that conversion percentage should come down. It should, but goodness. Every time he was on the goal line last year, he, he had some move that just made him wide open. It, I feel like it was automatic. You say 13 targets. I'm surprised it was the 13 touchdowns. 
Well, I mean, it, it, but even if you look at the math on a great quarterback, they're they're hitting what sixty seventy percent of their completions, and yeah, he no, you're he, right. he exceeded that ten to thirteen. So uh, take a look at the red zone report. Look at some other players that had massive opportunities. Um, you know, yep. one last one that I'll throw out there, Alvin Kamara. I don't have it right in front of me now, but I remember like Kamara scored a lot. I mean, he, he's ping pong back and forth between that red zone efficiency, but based on his, his 10 zone attempts, you know, you could see his touchdown total come down. And the same type of, uh, nuggets that you can glean from that, you could glean from the market share report as well. Uh, we don't have th those specific references, but just pull those up and look at how these players are being utilized and be like, Oh, this should this should be worth more, or oh, this should not be worth what they got. I, I I love that kind of analysis. And then you take that, and then you go to Mike's tip, and you mark the players how mm -hmm. you want them to be, and you're the fantasy analyst, and you say, I don't even need you guys anymore. I'm the captain. I'm now. the captain now. All right, my last tip, my last ultimate draft tip. We, I think we have we've always done this. Always. This we've, is this is what it's all about. We have talked about it for years, but I think we've actually not talked about it enough over the recent years for people who maybe have picked up in the last year or two we used to talk about this all the time but tier based drafting and the importance and the difference of drafting in tiers than drafting with just straight rankings it is monumentally different it is so helpful it is the number one if i could only take one tip from any of of our tips it would be to it would be my tip. it would be this one it would be to <laughs> it would be mine it would be to make sure that i'm utilizing tier based strategy in your draft and here's what it is so in the in the udk we put every single player in a tier that means they are grouped positionally with other players with a very similar range of outcomes People say like all the time, well, are you going to put like superflex rankings in, in in the udk you know superflex is growing Yes, it's called tier-based rankings. <laughs> they are identical. And I know people are like, whoa, 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 but how do I know? Let me explain how to use tier-based rankings. Because if I were to go into a super flex league, I would use tier-based rankings. You don't sort the p players together. It is, it is positional differences from one to the other. So when I'm looking at my tiers, and I printed uh, our cheat sheet with our tiers here, I would go into the draft saying, I want to make sure that I get a at least a tier six quarterback. And this is where you we're using this to help shape your opinions. This is your draft, not our draft. You take this and you look and you go, well, no, I don't want a Trevor Lawrence or Matthew Stafford or Ben Roethlisberger. I want better. I'm going to make sure I get at least a tier four guy. I want a Jalen Hurts or a Matt Ryan before I leave my draft. But when you look at the tiers, what happens is you're on the clock. And you, you look and you say, okay, right now I'm in the, you know, whatever, the fourth, fifth round, and I'm deciding between David Montgomery and Kenny Galladay. You're even at running back. You're even at wide receiver. And so who should you take? If you use a stupid, idiotic top 200 list, <laughs> oh, man. which we do provide, Jeez. much to our own chagrin. Choosing violence but, today. But like with a arm twist oh, like man. we, we put so that in there because the don't use it people the it's pitchforks it makes you so false confident it makes you look like oh i got this guy like 30 spots ahead of where they should go it's so dumb but here's here's the reality if you're using a tier base you can take a look and say okay i'm looking at david montgomery or kenny galladay now david montgomery might be the last player in currently in tier five and you go okay so if i don't get david montgomery then that means I'm going, you can easily see I'm dropping down to the next tier. I'm dropping down to a David Johnson, a, a Mike Davis, uh, that type of a player. Whereas Kenny Galladay, maybe if I don't get him and he's in that tier five, I go, oh, you know what? There's still Robert Woods. There's still DJ Moore. There's, there's still uh, Chris Godwin in that tier. I'd be fine. So that's, then you go that direction. It's, it makes it so clear because you're taking a look at how many players are left that have the same range of outcomes and at the end of the day you're going to draft even if a player is lower in a top 200 ranking you're going to get a much higher tier of player at each position you're going to be set up so much more for success but it is worth noting the tier numbers do not relate to one another right if I'm down at tier three or tier four of running back and there's still a tier two quarterback that doesn't mean well, uh, t two is higher than four, so he could do it. It's just showing you groups of players with similar outcomes, and if you utilize that to draft, you will be such – you will be 
so much more improved as a fantasy football player. So print the tier, tiered sheets or, or use the app. I love, dude, another tip, pro tip, added tip. Use an iPad if you got it for the UDK sure. app. That thing is awesome. The iPad? Yeah, the, the, the UDK on the iPad, it, it, it works great. Yeah, preparation goes a long way. I mean, I think that's the message on, on today's show is that, you know, we, we say the line, Jason will bring it up over the course of the offseason. Uh, you don't win your league at the draft, but you do set the foundation for your team. If you make uh, a handful of selections that are, you know, informed, you're going to have more flexibility. You're going to have more fun because you're going to have the opportunity to make trades. Um, you know, we talk about the way that you take advantage of, you know, trades. A lot of the time you're throwing two or three players to go get that game breaker, you know, on your team. And you need flexibility to do that, which means you need depth. You need to find values late in the draft. And so hopefully today's uh, ultimate draft tips helped you out. Brooks, are you feeling um, better about your, your impending drafts this year? So much better. Yeah, I thought that might be the case. I'll throw one thing out there. It's not <clears throat> not a necessarily a draft tip. It's just a fantasy football enjoyment. Uh, if you do grab the ultimate draft kit, it, number one, thank you. But we give you a free preview of our uh, footcast, which is available for our Foot Clan supporters at jointhefoot.com. So you're going to get an extra podcast a week for a couple months. It's a good point. I, I It was pointed out to me on social media when you know, we talked about the NFT for my voice that the buyer, it was revealed. It was, in fact, the richest man on earth. Oh, Brooks got it? Brooks was the buyer. Mm. So it was easy to license it back from our producer. But, um, man. He is a benevolent money, man. Money, 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 money. The, the wealth. The way he tries to spend it, but he just accumulates. Well, I mean, mm. even then he tried to spend it on the NFT, but then you're buying it back. You're rent. Yeah. He's pr he's making money off of this transaction. It's just he he doesn't know how to not make money. How are you so rich and humble, Brooks? I can't tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> see, it's it's a mystery. That was the answer of a rich, humble man. That was the <laughs> that was the perfect answer for a, a really, really rich man that is exceptionally kind and humble. Thank you, Brooks. Thank you for working for us. I do what I can. Yeah, that's incredible. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. We hope it helped you out, and we will be back with, well, we got a footcast coming this afternoon at jointhefoot.com and then new episodes next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.